Hello everybody, if you are a Raspberry Pi user and you are an Ubuntu fan, you have come to the right place. This is the first video of a series where we are going to speak about Raspberry Pi and Ubuntu Core, the Ubuntu flavor optimized for IoT and embedded devices. My name is David Beamonte and I am Product Manager of Ubuntu Core at Canonical and during this series I will try to give you some insights into what you can do with Ubuntu Core on a Raspberry Pi and guide you through the process. You should also bear in mind that many of the examples and tutorials that we will be using along this series can be directly extrapolated to other platforms. So let's get started. The goal of this first video is to introduce Ubuntu Core so that all of you have a clear understanding of what Ubuntu Core is and why it is an interesting option for you on a Raspberry Pi. In this video, I will try to leave out many technical details and we will get deeper into some of those details in some of the upcoming videos. And of course, the main goal is to guide you through the first steps so that you can have a system up and running. There is a lot of useful information in the description of the video. Please review it and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or doubts. So let's dive straight in. What is Ubuntu Core? Ubuntu Core is an Ubuntu flavor optimized for IoT and embedded devices, that is, systems with limited resources in terms of CPU, memory and storage, in comparison to PCs. Systems like Raspberry Pi and similar platforms are perfect examples of embedded systems. And what does Ubuntu Core actually offer? The first important thing is that Ubuntu Core is Ubuntu. It is based on LTS versions, using the same kernel and libraries, but removing all the unnecessary packages so that it is more lightweight. It is fully containerized based on snaps. That means that all the applications have to be snaps that are strictly confined. We will dive deeper into that in the next slide. There is also a large ecosystem of applications available in the snap store. And those applications, the kernel and the whole operating system can be updated using transactional bullet proof updates. That means that if an update eventually fails, there is an automatic rollback to the previous version. Security is in the DNA of the operating system, reducing the attack surface for connected devices and receiving promptly security patches from Canonical as soon as they are detected and fixed. And last but not least, Ubuntu Core has been certified for a large number of devices, including Raspberry Pis. Certification means that Ubuntu Core has been enabled on those devices by our engineers and then the devices are automatically and rigorously tested in our labs to check that the new system patches and updates don't break the system. And what are snaps? Snaps are the building blocks of Ubuntu Core. Simply put, snaps are applications that are packaged along with their dependencies. So they are immutable and fully portable. Strictly confined snaps provide full application isolation. A strictly confined snap can't break the system, but additionally the system or other applications running on it can't affect or break the performance of another snap. Every snap is based on a base snap, which is a special kind of snap that provides a runtime environment with a minimal set of libraries that are common to most applications. And Ubuntu Core is a fully containerized operating system based on strictly confined snaps. And the revolutionary thing here is that not only the applications are snaps, but also the kernel and the rest of the system. And additionally, snaps can be used across many other operating systems that support snaps. So you can, you can use exactly the same package in other systems without portability or dependency issues. And how do we work with Ubuntu Core? Okay, it's very simple. Ubuntu Core is not the typical operating system over which you are going to develop applications. It is typically an operating system that you flash, deploy your, applic your applications on, and just works. It is easy to maintain, it is secure, and always up to date according to your rules. So the applications are typically developed externally. You can develop, for instance, your applications using Ubuntu Desktop. And as those applications are snaps, you can even test them in that system. Then you can publish your applications to the Snap Store and deploy them on Ubuntu Core. It's a very simple and straightforward process. There are also ways to install Snaps manually without being published to the store. All the information related to how to work with Snaps can be found at snapcraft.io/docs. 
you can find the links in the description of the video. As I mentioned earlier, Ubuntu Certified Hardware Program is targeted to create a reliable framework so that developers don't have to worry about enabling the operating system on a specific hardware, and they can just get focused on application development. And the good news for developers is that the whole family of Raspberry Pi devices has been certified with Ubuntu Core. And so, you know that your applications are going to work smoothly and you're going to have an ultra-reliable device. And why should I use Ubuntu Core on my Raspberry Pi instead of any other distribution like Ubuntu Desktop? Well, it depends. If you're going to use your Raspberry Pi as a micro desktop PC, where you are going to run desktop applications to development and so on, then probably Ubuntu Core is not the operating system that you need. But if, on the other hand, you just want to use Raspberry Pi for a specific purpose, then you should give Ubuntu Core a try. For instance, imagine that you want to run a domotic system, home NAS, a media center, or a kiosk. In the beginning, you know, working on it, developing, and so on, that's fun. But when you put it in its place, you just want it to work autonomously and as much as at unattended as possible. So these are some of the interesting examples that we will show you in this video series. We will dedicate one video per each use case to explain step by step how to build these kind of applications. But there are many more reasons why you would like to run Ubuntu Core on Raspberry Pis. You can develop your applications on your, on your desktop PC without needing to cross-compile for ARM. Most of your time as developers is typically spent solving portability or library dependency issues. You know, we usually have to install a specific kernel or compile different versions of libraries to solve some conflicts, which is a major headache. In this case, as applications are deployed as snaps and they have all their dependencies included, you are going to get rid of all those issues. With the benefit that you can use those applications that you have developed as a snap across many operating systems. Additionally, Ubuntu Core keeps your system up to date and secure, applying the latest security patches. And finally, you have an ultra reliable system as applications can't make the system break and the system can't make the applications break. Okay, so now we have finished with the boring stuff. It was necessary to have some context, but it is definitely more fun to start playing with the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started with Ubuntu Core and Pis. The process is quite straightforward. Okay, we, we download an image for our device and needs. It can be 32 or 64 bit. We flash the SD card and boot and configure the system. When, once you have the system up and running, you can start installing applications. These are just the simple steps, steps to get started. In follow-up videos, we will show you how to build a custom full Ubuntu Core image, including the applications that you need. Okay, so <clears throat> let's download an image. First of all, we open the ubuntu.com download Raspberry Pi page. <clears throat> We scroll down to find uh, download Ubuntu Core section. We see that we can choose between 32-bit and 64-bit versions. Raspberry Pi 2 only supports 32-bit images, but the rest of the Raspberry Pis support both. So 64-bit is strongly recommended for most of the versions. And as I have a Raspberry Pi 4, I will download the 64-bit image and I will try the latest version of Ubuntu Core, which is the Ubuntu Core 22 beta. Okay, this takes a while, so let's fast forward a little bit. The next step is uh, to flash the SD card. Okay, there are many tools out there to flash SD cards, but I think that the simplest one is Raspberry Pi Imager. So that's the one I will show you. First of all, we have to choose the operating system image. We have several options here. If you want to choose one of the stable Ubuntu Core images, we click on the other general purpose operating systems, Ubuntu, and scroll down to the desired image. Okay. But I will show you how to flash the custom image that we have downloaded instead. Okay, we we'll go back to the main menu. We select use custom and select the image that we have downloaded. Now the application jumps to the main screen so that we choose the storage media, which is the SD card. In my case, uh, I have already flashed another Ubuntu Core image, but I will override it. 
and let's click on write. This might take a while and it depends on the speed of the computer and the card, so let's fast forward again until it has finished. So let's move to the next step, which is to insert the SD card in my Raspberry Pi 4 and boot it. Before that, we need to plug in a keyboard and a display as we will need them for the configuration process. The first boot takes quite a long time. We have flashed the image, but Ubuntu Core has to self-install during the first boot and perform a second boot, and this takes some minutes, so let's fast forward again. During this process, you might be required to press enter several times. Okay, so now we see that uh, it has finished and we are started with the configuration wizard. The first step is to configure the network. You can configure manual or automatic IP address with DHCP. Uh, in my case, I will take it automatic and it takes some seconds until the IP address is acquired. Okay, okay so here it is. A Wi-Fi interface can be configured instead if you have a Wi-Fi USB dongle. Okay. The next step is to register the device with your Ubuntu One account. If you don't have an Ubuntu One account, you can create it in login.ubuntu.com. I enter my account and press enter here. And I get a message indicating that this device has been registered to my account and I have SSH access to the device. During this process, the the SSH public keys were downloaded from Ubuntu One to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and we are just missing the final step. So let's install an application. First, we need to log into the Raspberry Pi using SSH. Once we are in, we can start checking the list of snaps installed. <clears throat> We see the base snap, core 22, the gadget snap, the kernel snap, and snapd. If you want to know more about all these snaps, please check the documentation. We will give you more details in upcoming videos too. I want to install another red, so I search for the package. <clears throat> Here it is. And I install it. And after the installation, I want to check that it has been effectively installed at the services active. Okay, so here it is. So the next step is I enter in a browser the URL and the port 1880 and check that Node-RED is effectively working. Okay, I can just add, well, skip this and add some nodes here. Deploy. And check that it is effectively working. Okay, and that's it. Let's do a quick recap. What we have seen in this video is, first of all, what Ubuntu Core and Snaps are. Then we saw why and when Ubuntu Core can be useful for you on a Raspberry Pi. And then we have seen some simple steps to get started with Ubuntu Core on Raspberry Pi. So thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned for more videos of the series. Thank you very much.